guys i'm just waiting for this is like my new an intro like my intro liners i'm just waiting for <laughs> i'm waiting for sam oh there we go hold on i'm just connecting now here all right amazing i like the dreads i don't think you had them before have you always had dreads <sighs> No, I actually kind of just stopped combing my hair. So yeah. <laughs> then try to make it look fancy and planned. <laughs> Hi Sam, how you doing Sam? I'm good. It's 3 a.m., but I'm good. Oh shame, man. Well, I'm grateful that you are joining me today to talk about I wrote capturing her Botswana because I feel like that's what you do. You capture Botswana through your eyes. So yeah, I want to start by basically not only just thanking you for being here, but for waking up because wow, time zone. <laughs> but yeah, let's get straight into it. How did you start your photography journey? Did you always like know you were into landscapes or did you shoot people mm -hmm. at first and then get into it? How did it start? Okay, first of all, thank you so much for the invite by the way. But I think in terms of my photography, I just started by picking up a camera really <laughs> my brother got me my first camera um i used to do events there was a time when i used to do events uh, family portraits as well but i kind of deviated and started to explore more of landscape photography right mm. because i think i feel like landscapes they they have Landscapes have a spirit. There's this thing in architecture that we call the the spirit of a place. It's like the ambience, you know. Oh, and right. I yeah, I could never get that from portraits or events. Mm. Do you think that you can? I like that you're saying that because um, I remember I did like a a project in 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 photography school i'm actually going to be writing about it on my blog tomorrow and basically mm -hmm. there was a photographer from south africa i think her name was joel ratcliffe and mm -hmm. so she went and she photographed um, a place that used to be a war zone and there was so much activity in angola i think and there was so much activity at this place and she comes mm -hmm. years later after the war has ended and there's no one there and she takes these pictures that give this vibe and this you know, like I said, like you said, ambience of, of really mm -hmm. just feeling very like, you know, cold and, and mm -hmm. you know, like what what used to happen at this place. So it's interesting that you've kind of brought that up. So you always knew, um, well, not always knew, but after shooting events and trying out everything, which I think every photographer when starting out should do, really just try mm -hmm. everything and figure out where your place is, you connected more with landscapes, specifically Botswana landscapes, am I right? That is right. You are very oh. right. <laughs> Amazing. So just connecting that now with your poetry, because you said photography, poetry, and architecture in that order. Mm. What is it about words that you feel connect to your photography? Uh, I think the photographs themselves are poetry. I I actually never want to separate my photography and my poetry because I feel like they're one. Right. And actually, without giving too much away, there's actually a little project that I've been working for for a bit now that mm -hmm. I hope I'll be ready to share with the world this coming year. It's it's Ooh. a photo poetry book, so book. to say, yeah. Yes. <laughs> cool. So can you tell us a bit about that? Don't leave us out in the dark. <laughs> hmm. Photo poetry, that's all I'm gonna say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Photo poetry. Will it be landscapes yes. or will it be like landscapes landscapes? I feel like that would be me giving it away. Ah, hmm. damn. <laughs> the suspense Easy. unfair all right cool but i just wanted to um like you said landscapes i think with you and words like it's so weird because i was like going through your instagram feed yesterday and i was looking at a bit of your poetry right mm -hmm. and i was like 
a lot i don't know if you did that on purpose but a lot of your quotes i think i saw three or four have something to do about place like place, the yeah. like i remember there was one did you do that on purpose do you think that even when you describe your mom you describe her as home like i feel like you know there's a certain connection you have to places just in general do you think that's something that was heightened when you started your journey in architecture or has it just always been there to be honest i think that's something that has been heightened with the move like moving from botswana to here to japan and mm. um, particularly cuz you know i was back home for the past 3 3 months right i think you know when you when you grow up in a certain area you you kind of start to lose sight of the things around you because mm-hmm. if you're used to seeing certain things certain places but the minute you are uprooted from that and stuck in a different setting you it's like that connection with where you were before it becomes stronger mm. so in coming back home i made it a point to do a bit of traveling around botswana and just mm-hmm. to graph really like a com- i completely disconnected from like i i am plugged from the world no no internet no whatsapp no facebook no instagram all i did was just photograph and feel right feel that connection you know, feel that connection reacquaint you- myself with those places do you think because i mean a lot of um but i'm just looking at the opportunity you have to have traveled i know a lot of people would want to do or would only consider taking pictures of landscapes if they had the chance to travel so they'll say oh i want to be a travel blogger or a travel photographer and focus on that and moving and taking pictures in different places but do you see maybe it's a certain change or different perspective when you look at photographs taken from Botswana which is a place of familiarity and photographs taken in Japan which is a place you are not so you're not yet acquainted to or is it all the same to you it's not all the same i realized photographs that i've taken back home um they're more emotional they tell a clearer story they're more textured than mm. photographs that i've taken here in japan probably because i haven't been acquainted like me and japan one were not it's it's not it's not a deep connection yet you get what i mean i haven't learned the place yet you know right mm. so you're still in a space where it's more like taking pictures like a tourist like an outsider as opposed to being in botswana more or less more or less if i look at the level of work that i produce when i'm back home and the work that i produce when i'm when i'm here more or less yeah so like you said before taking pictures in botswana has helped ground you and helped um basically help you find your place have you taken pictures maybe from your home village and you know places that are sentimental to you don't you you know how do you navigate taking such pictures because i know for me um i tend to get too familiar with a place where i don't i don't get inspired by it anymore so how mm-hmm. do you um, navigate that and i know a lot also on your on your feed a lot of your pictures are you you play around with perspective and so on and so forth so how do you how do you plan how do you usually find a way to draw inspiration from places that you are too used to um okay first thing when i look at a place i think this is probably where my architectural background comes in places places are never stagnant a place is never the same they grow and one of the places that i really love to photograph to this day ikokanye kumakhudu makhudu madam nka 
every time I go there, it's different. Like the place changes with seasons. It changes when people inhabit the space, you know. And it's actually, it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch, you know, because, like I said, they, they evolve. And I love to capture that. I think you can, you can actually see it in my photographs, the evolution of the space and the emotions. You know, a place is a living thing. I think that's something a lot of landscape photographers know is that a place is a living thing. I like that a place is a living thing because it literally is even from like mm. a literal perspective because it has all these living things. So when you take a picture of a place, you you have that perspective. You look at it and you're like, this is not... You look at it in the context of time, which I think is also very interesting. How you mm. photograph something today is not the way it will be tomorrow. I also mm. write about that um, in my blog post tomorrow. And I say that time is very important. And being able to take pictures also as a person as you evolve. So, yeah. like, let's say you're taking pictures of your home village. Let's say you're taking pictures of your home village when you were 10 and you take them when you're 25. And let's say you take them when you have a family or you have kids and so on and so forth. The context of the place changes. The meaning of the place deepens. Everything, when you look at it from that pair of eyes or from that perspective, begins to be more deeper. You know what I mean? So, I like that mm. you, you said that. A lot of people... I know in Botswana we'll say, oh, but, you know, Botswana doesn't have Khaburoni, that is, because Botswana is extremely stunning. But people would say, like, there's to have photo shoots. Now, this is p places in relation to people when you put the oh. two together and you're having photo shoots. And a lot of people will say, oh, I, I can't, there's not so many places to take pictures at. There's not so many places to have photo shoots at. What's your take? There's always a place to have a photo shoot <laughs> Really, there's, there is, there is ample places. I, I guess it just depends on. I guess it goes with the theme. Like, what would, what, what, what vision are you looking to, you know, to, to, to achieve here? But there is always places, especially, especially in Botswana. Especially I, in Botswana. Especially in in Botswana. I think we haven't exhausted. I think a problem with us is we we know we get too used to using the same places. Mm. And I think this is one of the things that also put me off with um like portrait photography is everybody will want to go to Avani or yeah. everybody will go to Sanitas. Mm. You know. But there's that beautiful spot next to the Fairscape precinct, you know that mount that people usually jog at. Mm. You know, there there's always right. places to take photographs. So it's a thing of people just learning to look. And I think also look. just especially as mm. portrait photographers, because we have this fixed idea of portrait photography to be this I don't know. We look at the West and we look at pictures and gardens and mm. we, think, we think that's all there is. Like we can't take pictures in Botswana, like in, in, in the desert or, you know, such places or even mm. just in the city. Like there's places you can take pictures at that are not common. So I think it also comes with allowing your work or your style or not even just your style, but allowing your inspiration to not be limited to what you know but be willing to open your heart to new places and just like allow the place to speak for itself. Sometimes you can't know until you actually take the pictures. So sometimes it's an issue yeah. of let me go then let me have the shoot. And then when you're editing, you're like, Oh my gosh, this place was fire. And I've had like a couple moments like that where I'm like, yo, I took this picture. Sometimes it happens by accident. You find a place, you take one shot and you're like, yeah. yo, this place is so sick. I need to go back. So yeah, I think it also comes with a perspective thing. Now, hmm. I know you don't want to talk about the photo book. Sorry. But, <laughs> We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> but I can ask a question um, as to 
Can you tell me at least one moment of photographing a landscape that you think has stood out for you? Just one moment of, I, f I feel, what's, what's the word? Like a deep moment or a, se a moment of great sentimental value that you've had of a place you photographed and you're like, I'm so glad I'm the one that got to be there with the camera at that, at the, on that day at that time. Oh man, that's such a difficult question. <laughs> I guess <laughs> I don't know what happened if it was my internet or hers that cut but I'm back let me see if I can get her to come back I'll wait for her to come online but in the meantime what we were doing a few minutes ago was talking to Sam hi to everyone that's joined us I see a couple people joined but um, we were speaking to Sam that's her other name <laughs> but um we were speaking to sam about the basically how to get inspired by places and how to get inspired by landscapes and she, i like this this interview because it's deciphering not deciphering it's 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 ignoring the um it's declining the common narrative that says Botswana is not a place to photograph at. It's not a place to be inspired by. And, you know, places of familiarity are not places you should photograph and you need to travel to take places of landscape. She's basically killing that narrative. And she's, I love that she's doing it from an informed perspective in the sense that she is basically talking from a point of view that says that she is in Japan and having seen the world, she still chooses to photograph Botswana. Sam is with us in a few seconds. She just sent me a request and she'll be talking to us now about a, a time of sentimental value. Hi, Sam. Hi, guys. Sorry, I was locked out. I, was, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I think it's my internet. Yes, I'm sure you had time to think on and reflect on one experience that was special to you when you were photographing a landscape. Yes, and thank the universe for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's actually one photograph that just actually popped into mind right now. I haven't shared it yet, but 
I took it gumara ke. Mm-hmm. I describe it briefly, but it's it was a it's a photograph of a cow, and on the cow, there's I think two birds. One is a mm. the third one is on flight, and there's a butterfly. Like right where the birds are, and all of this is happening in that one shot. And I think the mm. beauty of it is when you look at it, it's such a peaceful photograph, but there's so much chaos in it at the same time. In fact, I'll okay. I'll do. Like, um, I'll share it after. I like that. Add my my pillow soft is like share it. She's <laughs> like me right now. <laughs> no, I, I, I agree. Please do. I'll do that right after this. I will. That's a promise. Oh my gosh, I can imagine like for me, what I'm getting from it, just visualizing it, is how I, I'm thinking peace. I'm thinking yeah. oneness. Yeah. How everyone is existing, coexisting in one frame, yeah. which is powerful. Mm. I'm so excited! I can't wait to see it. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so you were there for that moment. Did you take several pictures, or was it just like, oh, bring my camera? You know, or like, I think the beauty of it was I was there with my camera, but when I took that photograph, I didn't see the butterfly until after. Like when I was going through the photographs, I was like, "Oh, okay, oh my word, wow, all right." <laughs> oh my god, I envy. Now I'm gonna start wanting to take landscapes. I think I should try Me it too. out though. I like that photographs in general. Like sometimes people think, "Oh, photography is not powerful or this or that," but it's so amazing when you take like candids, like you do, or just like. pictures where you can't really predict the outcome when you're going to a location you never know how the lighting will be and how yeah. that will bring out certain things and mm. so on and so forth so it's always so cool when you do that go home and you're like oh wait a minute mm. and you start to see things in the frame so that's like that's so cool i think a lot of people are scared of how candid that can be how you know out of control mm. you can be as a photographer because you're not dictating how the photograph will look like but i think it's interesting to try that out every once in a while i think i'll legit try that out like in the upcoming week that's no, really definitely. exciting all right i think that were all those were all the questions i had but i think i want to ask you another question my last one i know okay. you want to sleep <laughs> um <laughs> on your instagram you had said a quote that you wrote was those places where you're a no a nobody frequent them more let them teach you about yourself what prompted you to write that that's part of your poetry now mm. what um prompted you to write that it's actually being here like being in japan like people don't people don't know me you know like i i, I feel invisible and it's a nice feeling yeah. in a bad way in in a good way in a good way like it's it's i think it's in places where you don't have the distractions of people calling you out in the street or people you know expecting you to hang out you know like you start to understand yourself and learn things about yourself and it gives you a heightened sense of awareness i think mm. which i think it's it's any good it's it, it's a good like it's the good part of being in a foreign land you can be yourself freely right so i like that basically um different places have a way of instead of pulling a fake side of you they pull they pull out the more genuine honest side of you Yeah. And I like that she said awareness because that's exactly how I felt when I was in Cape Town. Mm. Like my thoughts were the most clear. I think even now my level of clarity in my head is literally just a continuation of how I felt when I left the country. And it's so necessary for people to I feel travel or go to places that they're not familiar with because the way that it can help you mentally just clear your head. and be yourself and not worry about how you position yourself and how 
you project yourself, you literally just be, mm. it will definitely teach you lessons. So I like that she said, you know, let it will teach you lessons mm. because that's exactly what traveling does. So that's exactly what being on the move, moving does, being in, being mobile does. So I found that really interesting. I think that's one of my favorite quotes. Um, do you know where we can access, of course, you know, do you know where <laughs> we can access um, your poetry? Um, I know you had something at some point. My poetry? My poetry is on my Instagram, but uh-huh. when, when the thing that I'm working on, when it's ready, the thing, <laughs> that thing, I know, I, I think Kluklo is here. She's probably like, but it's been, oh, it, some years now but (laughs) when it's ready i will make it accessible to everybody (laughs) i I don't want to say how i don't want to say how (gasps) give me something sam (laughs) unfair rude (laughs) january january January, you're releasing it in January. I'm giving you guys no February. February. No, you said January. You said January first. Okay, no, let me give you February the third. The third of February. February the third. Yeah, that's my okay. dad's birthday. We'll just follow you on Instagram to like make sure and like we will DM you every day. Every day. You post that is fine. Yes. That is fine. <laughs> accepted <laughs> thank you so much for spending your early morning with me thank you to all the viewers that pulled out your people love you i'm seeing a lot of cute comments here um but yeah thank you so much for everyone that came through and watched the ig live at ninja underscore mo says he wishes he watched from the beginning as soon as i conclude this ig live in a few seconds it will be um, on my profile, and I think on Sam's, so you could watch it there. Otherwise, all my IG live sessions are put on my Instagram, so this one is likely to be put on my Instagram this week. Um, at my pillow soft, hello, hello, hello. Hi um, pillow. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Hi pillow. <laughs> Hi pillow soft, and yes, we will be there February third. Um, and yeah, thank you so much to everyone that pulled through and watched the IG live. I know everyone is trying to December, December <laughs> and not have <laughs> to do anything else. But thank you for everyone that pulled through. Thank you, Sam, for your time. And thank you so much morning. for the invite. Amen. Thank you. Yay, we'll do this again on the 3rd. <laughs> February is my birthday month, so that will be my birthday. All right, to the 3rd. We'll, we'll, yeah, yeah. No, this time around, I'm, it's, it's, it's for real. <laughs> Amazing. You put it out on an on IG live, so now like, you have I can't to. take it back. I can't take it back. There's nothing to do. <laughs> Shem. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. All right. Thank cheers. you so much. Bye. Goodbye.